Thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and thank you all for making it through what is obviously a long day to this final session. You're all really waiting for the drinks, I know, but it's, it's nice that you've dropped in on me. Um, so my name's Steve Cogley. I'm director of this new National Innovation Center of Data, which is uh, based in Newcastle. Um, it's in this building, which I'm shortly going to be able to replace with a real picture. This is the artist's impression. The building itself will open in October. That's when we move in. Um, and it's a very striking building, especially as a, as a university building. And uh, we had a colleague recently visit and say, when does the casino open? Um, <laughs> so um, the National Innovation Center for Data is there to help organizations get the sort of knowledge that you guys have been picking up today. Um, we're there for knowledge transfer. So we're there to help organizations get those skills so that they can get actionable insight from their own data. And the reason we've been funded is, as you guys know, um, I'm sure, there's a huge shortage of digital skills, but there's a dreadful shortage of data skills. And this is really frustrating for the, for the public and private sector businesses that I've been talking to for the last few years. The execs in those businesses know there's a huge amount of insight which they could get from all of the data that they're collecting. So they're not collecting data from lots of software systems, from sensors embedded in production lines and in vehicles and in their buildings. Uh, they're collecting lots of data through social media. And they know that if they could dive into all of that data and get sense from it, they'd be able to improve their processes and get a better understanding of their clients. And it's very frustrating for them that they can't get their hands on that. And the reason they can't is because they don't have the right skills to let them access that insight. And that's because the people who are currently working for those organizations are still applying tools and techniques that are at least a, a decade out of date. And it's surprising how many large public and private sector organizations are still running on the back of an access database and a big spreadsheet. It's actually quite frightening. Um, we have a number of utilities, for example, we're dealing with who are running largely on the back of big spreadsheets. Um, so there's this huge shortage. And you, you can't, in general, buy these people for love and their money because the people with the right sorts of skills, the mix of the sort of maths and stats skills that I guess are, are prevalent here, alongside the ability to run scalable computing in order to crunch through sufficient data to give you insight, the combination of those two skills are very rare. Um, and the people who do have them um, are go gobbled up very quickly by the big vendors and by the banks and so on. So even large organizations can't hire those people in. So our argument to government was, if you can't hire these people, then you have to train your own. And that's what the National Innovation Center for Data is there for. It's to help organizations train up their own people with some of these new skills. Yeah. The reason it went to Newcastle, just to blow our own trumpet very briefly, um, universities typically do three things. They do research, they do teaching, and as a sort of a poor third cousin for many years, they do some form of engagement with the public and private sector. Um, increasingly, universities were being measured on all three of these. And we're good at all three of these in the data space at Newcastle. We've raised something like 100 million over the last 10 years or so in research around data science. That's data science applied to genetics, medical science, chemistry, engineering, and so on, poetry, whatever. Every single department inside the university these days has to crunch data. So we've got lots of experience with that. We're also uh, very good at the teaching side. We have a center for doctoral training in cloud for big data, producing people with exactly those sort of combination of skills I mentioned before. And we're very good at engagement. Um, we actually were ranked number one in the UK in the last research uh, excellence framework, uh, from which the government ran. Um, we were ranked number one, beating Cambridge into second place, which is always seems more impressive than the fact that we were, that we were first. Um, so what do we do? Well, we have this 30 million pound investment in data. 20 of that goes into this lovely shiny new building that you saw, coupled with 30 million from the National Innovation Center for Aging, who share the building with us. And just briefly on that, the reason why aging is in our building is that they don't do biology. What they do are products and services that apply to an aging population. And many of those are digital, so smart homes and sensors and so on. So we work very closely with them. Um, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a unique facility that will bring together the public sector, the private sector, academics, students, citizens, school kids. We've got a big focus on school kids in the building. We want get, to get lots of kids in and out of our building to see what an exciting career they can have in digital and in data. Um, it's ridiculous that we've got a huge shortage, but so few kids are going into those specialisms. 
So we want to create a building that creates an ecosystem around data. And we're going to do three things. With this fantastic new building, which is called the Catalyst, we will run lots of uh, seminars and events, workshops. We have a TED-style theater. I'm thinking of remodeling our TED-style theater now that I've seen this room, actually. This is really nice. Um, we've got a, um, a big visualization suite and so on. So we'll run lots of events aimed at sector specialists, technical people, business leaders, the public sector. Uh, we'll bring uh, citizens in to talk about issues about privacy and so on, um, and again, school kids. So we're gonna have lots of, lots of events building a pipeline of interest in data. Uh, the second thing that we'll do is we're gonna map out who's who in the world of data. So which, which vendors have exciting products, which consultants provide uh, useful services, which SMEs are offering innovative new products and services, which students are looking for placements uh, concerning data, uh, bachelor's level, master's, and PhD, and we'll do that nationally. So we're going to be a clearinghouse for people who have those sorts of skills and talents so that whenever organizations come to us, even if we can't help them directly, we'll be able to point them to somebody who can. But the third thing we do, and the thing I think that, is, that is, makes us somewhat unique, is that we have a dedicated team whose only job is to help businesses get these new skills. So our team are PhD level people coming straight out of university in the main. Um, they don't do any research, they don't do any teaching, formal teaching, they simply help organizations get these skills. So what we want to do is we want to work with organizations in a very pragmatic way in order to let them get immediate return on investment from the effort that they put into working with us, but simultaneously pick up a new set of skills whilst they're doing that. So the way we operate is we, um, we scope out with organizations immediate problems for which they have real business drivers. Um, we then uh, scope out a project which might run for three to six months. We ask the organization to give us some of their budding data scientists. These may be the people who right now are running the big spreadsheets, or they may be some young people who have just come into the organization and want to up, the, up their skill level. We work with them in our facility Actually, currently we're working in a very large tent, which is a bit of a, a, a we're gonna, it's gonna be much more impressive once we can move them into our casino. But at the moment, um, we work with them in a shared space. We assign our team to work alongside them, and our team steer and guide them, mentor them, give them hands-on tutorials and training to solve real problems that are fed back to the organization. And we only choose real problems because they have to get a return on investment or else they'll pull out of the project. Huh? At the end of that project, the hope is that they have a return on investment, that they have some new IP, and unusually as a university, we make no claim upon the IP, they own it. But above all, they have a new set of skills. And I'll give you an example of the sort of thing that we're doing shortly. So the building itself, like I said, beautiful, shiny new building. Um, we've got uh, this fantastic uh, 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 space for uh, TED style talks and so on. We have a lovely boardroom. We have a great cafe downstairs. It's gonna be a very vibrant, exciting building. The sort of building that not only data professionals, but also business people and people who have a broader interest in digital will want to engage in. We want it to be the center of digital and data for the Northeast. We're working with a very broad range of organizations. In the main, the organizations we work with need to be the larger organizations, the larger uh, public sector and private sector organizations. And the reason for that is that you have to kiss a lot of frogs before you find a prince with SMEs. They also don't have the, the ability to pick up the skills that you're passing on. They're too busy trying to keep alive. And I know because I ran an SME for 15 years. Um, they're just too busy to pick up those skills. So we have to pass the skills on to the larger organizations. Um, so the sort of businesses that we're dealing with at the moment are in the private sector. Uh, we've run successful projects with uh, Procter & Gamble and with Axon Noble. Those other ones we're currently engaged in projects in. On the public sector, so on the public sector side, we're working with uh, uh, councils and with the health service. Uh, we're working with DWP and HMRC as well. Um, so because of that, because we're working with those large companies, we also then get the attention of the large consultancies um, have I got a laser on this at all? Yes, I did. The large consultancies and also the large sort of tooling uh, companies and vendors. Um, we're neutral as far as our partnerships with them are concerned, but we are able to signpost organizations to those sorts of organizations who can assist them. 
And those organisations are all very interested in clustering around our ecosystem in order to engage with some of these bigger public and private sector businesses. Yeah? Also, because we do all of this stuff, that interests the SMEs. So we do help the SMEs. We, we will run events and projects that will attract big businesses, and that will attract the SMEs to come into our building and showcase their skills and their services and products. So we're getting a lot of interest regionally from large numbers of SMEs who are coming to join us. Here's the current team. It's, it's, it's small for such a large building, but at the moment, like I say, we're in a tent, so we haven't got any room for anybody else. Um, and we're growing out the, the, the team from, largely from, at the moment, from our uh, CDT program at Newcastle University. And that CDT program, we, we, uh, we take people who are either have a maths and stats background or computing science background. In year one, we train them up in each other's discipline. And then in subsequent years, they do a, a normal PhD, except that it's very focused on a, a public or private sector business. So we want them to deal with real world data. They go out and do internships and they work on, on very practical projects, often quite non-academic in many ways. Um, and that's a fantastic source of talent for us. We're able to take people off that. So four of the people here are straight off that, that course last year. Um, our hope is that we'll continue to do that each year. And the thing that we're telling these people is, come and work for us for a couple of years. We'll introduce you to everybody who's anybody in the world of data science. And at the end of that time, you'll get a plum job. And that'll extend our network and hopefully pull in new students into the building uh, from the next year's intake. So I just wanted to talk to you about the sort of, uh, this, this is a, it's a private sector organization. I know I'm sort of talking uh, to some extent about public sector here as well, but it's the same story in each case. This is an organization called LKQ. Anybody heard of LKQ? Great, that's my, my, my record remains intact. That's about, I said at least two and a half thousand people I've spoken to now, nobody's ever heard of LKQ. They're a Fortune 500 business. They're the world's largest distributor of car parts from the manufacturers through a distribution chain down to the garages. Um, in Europe, they own Eurocar parts, which some people may have heard of. So they approached us a couple of years ago with this story that they had lots of siloed data inside the organization in different divisions and different departments, all used for specific purposes, but nobody was pulling it together to get the big picture. They didn't have enough people with the right skills to enable them to do that. So they sent us, we negotiated with them, and they sent us six people from their business, budding data scientists. They sent someone from India who was a database expert, somebody from Poland who was the project manager, an uh, Italian guy who had some development skills, a couple of people from London, um, and a local person as well. So six people, they put them up in a flat in Newcastle for, for six months. Must have been some sort of man behaving badly environment, my suspicion is. And um, they, they worked with us for six months alongside our team, solving immediate problems for the business and feeding that back to their management team. And on day one, we had a list of questions from the management team. And um, we started on the first one, and about two weeks in, they were all thrown out the window, and the management team came back with the real questions that they wanted answering once they started to see that we could deliver real results. At the end of this six month period, um, this is some quotes from the people who were engaged in the project. They had delivered just under two million pounds of an immediate return on investment to the business. That team were then formed into their data analytics team for Europe and based in Newcastle, which is great news for us. Um, and they were shortlisted for the outstanding big data industry project. Didn't win, unfortunately, but uh, they, they were shortlisted. So that's exactly the sort of thing that we're trying to achieve with the National Innovation Center for Data. We're trying to bring organizations in and help them bootstrap their data analytics capability. And we've done that already with a couple of private sector organizations, but now we're working with the NHS regionally and with local councils regionally to let them do the same thing in their organizations. The other thing that we're doing when we work with these, with these companies is we have a floor of commercial space in our building. And within that space, we're trying to encourage either SMEs that have great specialisms in this area or pods of data scientists from large organizations to take that space. So we're talking to on the public sector side, the NHS, we're talking to DWP, we're talking to um, uh, the councils in the, in the, uh, in the north of Tyne, um, we're talking to NHS BSA, a lot of organizations. On the private sector side, we're talking to people like IBM and Accenture and so on. And we're trying to persuade them to take a small amount of space in the building and then rotate 
their budding data scientists through that space so that they can engage on our projects and our events, but also be part of an ecosystem and learn from each other. We're hoping, for example, that co-locating a team from the NHS next door to a team from a local council will help us um, explore how better to share data and get more value from data to keep people at home longer, for example. We've got a big issue regionally, in fact, everywhere we've got this issue, where something like 95% of the budget of a local council goes on 5% of the population. And a lot of that is around either children, but often it's around elderly people um, having to go into care. So bringing those two units together, letting them work together and discuss these problems, gives us an opportunity, perhaps, to improve upon that and actually keep people at home longer and therefore save the public purse uh, to a considerable extent. And um, just probably worth also saying uh, around the sort of um, uh, projects that we're running. When we first set this up, everybody was talking to us about AI. And um, so everybody was saying, well, it'll be great. Once we have your, your organization up and running, we can come and do projects with you on AI. It very quickly became apparent to us that that was a way down the road. Most of the businesses that we've dealt with, 50% of the effort goes into simply cleaning up and improving and getting access to their data. And that's a very large amount of the work that we're doing. Machine learning then figures also significantly as well. But at the moment, most of the work that we're doing is bread and butter work, helping them to, to get their data into order before we can start getting insight from it. Okay. So um, in summary, I'm going to leave myself plenty of time for questions here. Um, we're trying to build a beacon for data innovation. So the way I like to look at it is like a temple to data. Right? It's a place where data professionals will really be excited about participating in and being part of. And um, it's a place where the local community will come. We want to run digital art events at the weekends. We want to have lots of events around exciting children about the, the possibilities. We've got lots of visualization in the building. We work closely with a professor of visualization, a guy called Nick Holliman at Newcastle, who's helping us put together exciting visualizations, and with some of the big uh, private sector companies as well, to give us exciting visualizations that will, that will impact upon people when they come into the building. We want things like interactive, interactive screens that school children can interact with. Um, so it'll be something that'll be very visually exciting and appealing to a broad range of people. Um, World-class facilities and services inside this, inside this lovely new building, but we're really all about that third point. We're really all about working with organizations to ensure that they pick up these new skills and can then take them back to their organization and then they can deliver the innovation. They can show the business or the organization where the savings can be made in their processes, how they can interact better with their customers, um, and so on. Um, and if they can do that, they can go back to their own organizations and they can then deliver impact to those organizations with those new skills. Okay, that's me, thank you very much.